The former CEO of General Electric, a guy named Jack Welch, once famously said, the moment the rate of change outside an organization exceeds the rate of change within it, the end is near. And the challenge for any business or any organization right now is how do you consistently re-engineer how you do things internally so that you're at least keeping up with the pace of change outside the organization and ideally even being one step ahead. When I'm working with clients, helping them re-engineer their systems and their processes, there's a simple four-step exercise I run through with them. I want to unpack that model in this short video. Maybe it's something that you can apply to something within your own organization or your team. The first step is to actually pick an activity, something you do every single day, and the first step is to pull it apart, to deconstruct that activity. So list out every single step you go through in performing that task. What's interesting is how often when I'm doing this with clients, They'll look at the very long list. And of course, this list is not just the conscious things, but the unconscious things you do, trying to make it very explicit, the steps you go through every single day. So you see suddenly all the things you do unconsciously, but more importantly, you get two or three people in a certain role, maybe they're in the same role, working in the same organization, you do that list independently. And then you compare the lists those people form and you'll be amazed what you learn. For instance, you may well find there are massive areas of duplication because people are doing the same thing. Perhaps you'll find areas where there are huge gaps because everyone thought someone else was covering that off, whereas in fact no one actually was. Now speaking of the areas of duplication, I remember coming across a print company a little while ago who went through this exercise. And they looked at all the steps they went through as they, uh, from a, the point when a new customer came into their print shop with a job to be done to when that customer picked up their print job and they listed out all the steps their staff went through. And when they collated all the activity steps together, they discovered they were writing out the customer's name, address and phone number 32 separate times. And they had no idea they were wasting so much energy. There was so much duplication until they made their processes explicit to actually set them all out until they disassembled or deconstructed them. So the first step is to deconstruct the activity. Now the second step is to evaluate, to look through those long activity lists and go, well, of the things we're doing, questions like, you know, ask yourself, how many of them don't make sense? Are we doing things that are no longer relevant? are no longer efficient? Are there new technologies we could be using? The key question to ask, of course, is the question of what are we doing that's not adding value to the customer? Because if it's not adding value, it's adding cost. And so ask a question of all these steps. What are the things we're doing that don't make sense? The third step is to innovate. Once you look at the, the list of activities and you find the things that really need to be reconsidered or rethought, then you need to innovate. Look at how you do those things differently. Now, of course, innovation is easier said than done. And it's not just about doing things differently. It's often about looking at those activities and trying to adopt a different mentality. The late, late Dr. Wayne Dyer put it best when he said that when we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. And so the first key for you to innovate is to try and shift your paradigm, shift your perspective. One of the most powerful sources of innovation, by the way, is someone with fresh eyes. You bring someone from outside the organization or even outside that department or that role in, and you, send, you give them the list of activity steps, the things you think are a little bit outdated, and you allow that person with fresh eyes to look at those activity steps and say, how would you do this differently? As someone who doesn't know how we've always done things, as someone who doesn't even know what the box looks like, how would you think outside the box? And you'll be amazed what that person will come up with. The fourth step is to reassemble the activity. Once you've pulled it apart, you've evaluated it, you innovate, then you need to put it all back together and you need to implement the changes. Now this is the fourth and most difficult step in many cases because execution is critical. So often where change management falls over is in the execution phase. We have the best of intentions, but we don't embed the new way of doing things efficiently or effectively. And so of course, if you try and change things and people don't feel they know what their new job or their new role is or the new way of doing things, if there's uncertainty, they'll go back to what they know. And so they'll go back to doing things the way they were doing them before you try to change them. So I wonder of those four steps, which would be the most valuable for you? And is there an activity right now that you need to sit down and think about really critically you know, when it comes to re-engineering, whether it's outdated, whether it's no longer efficient, and if so, now is the time to deal with it. You know, as Jack Welch said, if you don't keep up with the change outside an organization, the end is near.